This is Matrix Lord 212 and this is my third attempt um, at making this video um, concerning Doctor Who Series 7. Um, something's with this Logitech and the microphone and everything and I made videos and I had no sound um, and it's very funny how an iPhone uh, is like more powerful in a way than a laptop because like when I make videos with my iPhone I have no problem uh, it, it just uploads right away but then there's always like software issues with this camera I have to uninstall it install it um, get a different laptop same thing uh, it's just ridiculous so one of these days I'm gonna figure out uh, what exactly is going on with this software and this camera and everything because the camera's not even that old I bought it in December so anyway I'm rambling. So anyway, uh, what I want to talk about today is um, I want to make everybody aware that there's been something going on in Doctor Who since Series 2. Okay, um, there's been a lot of companions, a lot of people uh, in, in the episodes that do not remember the Daleks or the Cybermen. And there's got to be a reason for this. Um, it was in Russell T. Davis's time. It is in Stephen Moffat's time. Um, you know, nobody remembers the events of Doomsday. Nobody remembers the next Doctor events where we had the Cyber King walking around crushing houses. Nobody remembers Journey's End, Daleks. It's almost as if, if I could take a guess, it would be like the silence are erasing and rewriting history. Um, you know, and if the Daleks can't be remembered, they can't be feared. Same thing with the Cybermen. So, um, something's going on. There's some type of subplot that's been around since series two probably or series one maybe that actually probably series one because even in the dalek episode um they didn't even know what a dalek was and if, if you have history from all the times they invaded or attacked or came to earth there would be some type of record or something so um so even since series one there's no um no one knows who the daleks are or the cybermen so what exactly is going on with time um is it just that like uh, everybody's minds are being erased or is time being um erased um and the only person that has memories of this is the doctor or sometimes members of unit so um there's got to be something that's going on um i don't know what it is uh i don't know if because and there's another thing too the cracks in the wall okay uh it is said since the vampires in venice that the silence came through the cracks and so did all these other races, and the, the silence hunted them down. Um, even the Star Wheel, everything, they all came through this crack from another universe, I guess. So, um, is the the appearance, is the intervention of the silence, have anything to do with uh, these splinters in time, these stitches in time, these cracks in time? Um, because you know, because they weren't there in the first place, and now they are. Is this damaging time and making time bleed as it was stated in the end of time um, now we know what happens when you break a fixed point okay uh, but you know this already happened in waters of Mars I mean the doctor changed the fixed point in time and nothing like that from the wedding river song happened where everything got fused together so something is definitely going on um, and I think it has to do with the silence really uh, the Daleks had memories of the silence uh, you know as we saw in Wedding River Song uh, it was in a data bank so um, I think the silence have to do with rewriting the universe and will probably ultimately lead to the end of Amy Pond um, now it's just it's just you know the 11th hour has so many clues and I have saw this episode so many times um, I was watching Paul one the other day on YouTube I have the DVD I gotta go pop it in um, but it, it, you know there was one thing that that struck me and just like someone commented on my channel about the Apple um, yeah you know supposedly Amy Fon Amy, Amy Pond meets her fate in the Big Apple but uh, the doctor had a craving for an apple now when he went to eat the apple he spit it out, he said he didn't like it, new math and new rules, but yet he has an apple in the God complex and he loves apples. So, you know, why is it that every single food that Amelia fed him, he doesn't take to, unless it's fish, fingers, and custard, has something to do with the fish? And why did she pray to Santa, thanking Santa for the fish, the pencils, and the dolls? Um, and this fish mentioned in every single episode. Um, and what I was stating in the other video, since it, until it got erased, like messed up, um, 
I said, you know, is this universe um, absent uh, from the existence of God? Because um, why would Amelia be praying to Santa and not God? Um, you know, why would Rory have no fear at all uh, of anything? Nothing. Um, and so it's like, so he's a robot. <laughs> <laughs> you know the the 1990s name badge is going to be something I bet. Um, but someone was taking um, someone was taking care of Amelia Pond all those years. It could be Rory um, watching over, or it could be River Song be playing the part of her aunt. So um, you know somebody was watching Amelia Pond, protecting her from Prison Zero all those years. Um, you know, and it was also stated that you know she went through a lot of doctors and psych psychologists and stuff like that um but now like the, her memories are splintered together from two different universes one universe where her parents existed which was the original universe then they sh they disappeared then they reappeared again but how does this fit in with the doctor because if her parents were around in that universe she would have never met the doctor probably so you know, maybe this whole series five, six, and seven never happens. Um, you know, maybe, like I said, I kept saying, you know, in order to fix the universe, it would mean the end of Amy and Rory Pond. You know, that's basically it because, you know, there's a lot of things that are wrong. Um, no ducks in a duck pond. Now, even in the three doctors, it started off with a pond, a river, or ducks in a duck pond, Professor Tyler. That's going way back to the third, th the third doctor's adventures and the three doctor's anniversary special. So, with Omega, o Omega, whatever. Um, so, you know, there's something going on. You know, the rumor that, you know, the silence were stowed away on the TARDIS, learning how to fly it. Um, they made their own, I guess, in the lodger. You know, and they had that same TARDIS in the day of the moon. There's a lot of unanswered questions. There's also, uh, you know, a question about the color red. What is going on with the color red? Um, it's all over the place in Lemon Dower. The red pinwheel, the red outfit that, that Amelia wears, the red flashlight, uh, red everything. Uh, red balloons. Red balloons. Wait, what is so special about red balloons? Ugh. I don't understand what what is with the red balloons in a lot of episodes too. The bird tweets, the red balloons, um, the cracks in the wall, apples. Well, I mean, well, the apple, like you know, okay, he didn't like it, then he liked it in God Complex. Um, post office being closed. They mentioned this a few times. Why? Fish references in every single episode. Why? Um, something is weird. You know. Weird. Something's weird. I, I can't. I'm trying to figure it out, and I can't get to it. It's just he's such a he's so brilliant, Stephen Moffat. It's just you know it's beyond me. I can't I can't figure out what he's trying to do. But uh, one hopefully I'll find out before it's too late. <laughs> but um you know something is going on. Um and you know what too like I knew it since they showed those new toys. They had new toys and they showed uh, eradicate the Daleks and Cybermen from time with this weird gun or something. Now. You know, this would tie in directly with Series 7. It wasn't just a toy created just to be a toy. It was created from the, the ideas of Stephen Moffat in Series 7 because, you know, they've had this in their in their head, him and Russell T. Davis, for some reason that everybody keeps forgetting the Daleks. Don and Oval didn't recall anything to do with the Daleks. No Doomsday, no nothing. Them taking over the world, nothing. Um, you know, Amy Pond didn't even know what a Dalek was. I mean, this is ridiculous now. Um, it's got to be some type of big plot, just like the church um, that is probably run by Omega. Now, um, he in Time of Angels, he talks about the the the, um, the end of the the headless monks. If you can, if you caught that, he talks about uh, I think of course or Dorian. I don't know what he said in the episode when he's going to the museum. It was like you know it was all in there. So. Um, I'm just, I'm wondering what's going on. What, what does the 51st century have to do with all this, too? Because it's always back to the 51st century. That was the first thing that was um, talked about in, in The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances was Captain Jack was from the 51st century with the Nanites. Uh, it's always the 51st century. Um, th that's where Sonic uh, Screwdriver was created. That's where Captain Jack got the Sonic Blaster. Um, that's where the factory was burned down to the ground. Um, supposedly by the doctor, so nobody would have that technology, and then a banana factory is created, just like they always keep mentioning bananas, um, even the 10th doctor, 
banana daiquiri, uh, you know, and he was talking, and even in the mini episodes, talking about banana. I don't know. It, it, it either it's just uh, you know a ruse or not a ruse, um, something to just throw us off. I mean, one of these clues are real and mean something. I mean, I don't know if it's the bird tweets or the you know the red balloons or the fish. Something I think the fish keeps alluding to the big fish, which is Omega. So we got to figure this out. We got to figure out why nobody remembers the Cybermen, no one remembers the Daleks. And just, like, how does the Cybermen, you know, I mean, if you take a look at the, the creation in the alternate universe, it's very, very similar to Victory the Daleks, where, you know, you think some guy created them, but meanwhile, the plans were given to that person to create them in the first place. So, you know, the Daleks weren't created by that that guy. They created the robot in Victory the Daleks. Um, just like the Cybermen weren't created by Loomis either. Um, so... Maybe this was a way for the Cybermen to come back uh, and rebuild themselves. Uh, somehow they got the plan sent to that alternate parallel uh, universe. So um, it just we have to figure out what's going on, why the Daleks keep getting erased from Membrace memory. Um, and it's a big, big deal. Uh, you may not think it's not, but it is. Um, and hopefully all these answers will be revealed in the Asylum, uh, Asylum of the Daleks, the, the season opener for Series 7. Uh, and I do feel that the Cybermen are going to have a big episode, too, because this is directly tied to it. I mean, we may have, you know, a season finale with the Daleks and Cybermen again uh, with, uh, you know, maybe Omega uh, leading into the 50th anniversary. So, um, I, you know, something's going to happen. And, and I do feel that, you know, if we don't have, like, all the Doctors that are existing to return, I do feel that they'll probably splinter it into each episode as part of the anniversary rather than one big special. And maybe that would be better to build up that way. Um, I do hope that David Tennant returns. I do hope that Christopher Eccleston returns, the 8th Doctor, Paul McGann. Um, you know, I hope that everybody can return that's existing, you know, alive. But uh, and I do hope... I know that they're not going to do, they're not going to throw too much at us. So maybe they'll save it for different episodes. But um, the 50th anniversary, hopefully, hopefully, will be memorable. It will be a, it will be great. Uh, it will last the test of time, like survive the test of time. And it will go down in history as the best anniversary special ever. Um, but we're going to have to wait and see. Um, and, and what exactly is going on with Amy? There's always talk of fairy tale dreams, even with River. River says sweet dreams, everyone. Those are the last words that she said in uh, Forest of the Dead. Uh, in Time of Angels, she's like, when we, we fail to dream or something like that, uh, the angels will come. Um, so, you know, will the dream lord return? Does he have anything to do with this? Uh, was he created uh, to become the Valyard? Uh, you know, and I don't feel that the Valyard... The Valyard is a part of the Doctor, but I don't I don't know if he's going to become evil. I don't think the Doctor's capable, but, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. I mean, was that timeline erased? You know, another thing, too, um, the Big Ben was destroyed in World War Three in Series 1. So, did they rebuild it that fast, where the Doctor almost crashed into it? I mean, or is this a parallel universe? Is that a sign that it's a parallel universe? Um, I was thinking right away that it was a parallel universe, the moment that... Um, the doctor arrived because the TARDIS exploded outward and I guess time energy and everything probably created a hole or crack that would make him go to a new universe but we're going to have to wait and see on that one um, and why is um, the Dream Lord reflection in his TARDIS he was actually operating he wasn't an illusion, he wasn't no hologram he was actually operating the TARDIS um, when they were waking up so um, you know has to be something going on with that. All right, so this video is very, very long. I don't want it to get rejected. So um, thanks a lot, and leave your comments below.